Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit. This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. The one thing, sister, I thought I would never talk about, we're going to talk about today. Conversation with God. Like, oh my God, Karen, who has hacked your phone? Who has hacked your podcast? This cannot be you. Where's the flying of fucks and the in your face and like call me out and oh yeah, there's still that piece too. But let's talk about this because, you know, as you know, on the podcast, it's so funny. I, I, you know, the, the, the negative iTunes reviews, which I do have more than a few that are there on iTunes. If you want to go read them for a good laugh, by all means do that. We'll say certain things. So things like, all she does is talk about her life. I'm like, yep, that's actually correct. And how it can relate back to you and what I learned and sharing those lessons. That's correct. And then I also find it comical that they go, oh, she swears so much. It's like, well, it does say explicit. That is the warning. (laughs) So how it's categorized on iTunes. If there's a swear word, you categorize as explicit. Not a big deal. But let's talk about this because I'm feeling more of this pull towards spirituality right now. And I have always considered myself to be a spiritual person. I don't know how you've grown up, sister. I did not grow up with any, any form of organized religion. My parents were part of a group called the Emissaries of Divine Light. We lived on a commune, some new shit you get to find out about. We lived in a commune for a couple years in the 70s. Uh, and, um, and, and it was a, I guess you would say religion. Um, and then, you know, they were part of that for a number of years, but it was not something that everyone would really understand. My parents were considered servers, meaning that the city that we lived in in Ottawa, people would come to our house for these, I don't know, what would they call them? I'm trying to think, meetings? I don't remember. I don't know. They would meet. They would watch a video. They would read something, like whatever. But outside of that, and I wasn't really like a piece of that. I was, but I wasn't. I didn't understand it. Um, and But outside of that, I've always been very much, uh, it's like religion repels me. I always think I'm like, man, if I was to walk in a church, I'm just going to like burn. <laughs> like... You know, the, the religion that I know of, the religions that I know of, and how I've always seen religion has been, here's the rules, you're either down or you don't, and if you're not, you're going to hell. Like, that's just the way it's going to go, right? God is a wrathful God. God will take you down. You cannot, you know, don't, don't, uh, you, you know, blasphemy is wrong. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Like, all these kind of rules and stuff. And, you know... The way I roll, sister, uh, rules, rules, not that I think the rules don't apply to me. I don't think I'm above the law, above the rules. I just don't think that rules need to be in every facet of our life. And I feel like there's been a lot of not good things that have come out of religion. Now, if you are a religious woman, amazing, beautiful. I know a lot of women, um, a lot of people where faith is like, it's a really strong piece of their life. Church is that community, like all of that beautiful. Like it's really brought them certain things. It's, it's allowed them structure. It's, um, give them a framework to teach their children about God and religion and spirituality. Like great, great. It's just never something that's worked for me. And honestly, I don't really know of any kind of like religion, so to speak. I just kind of think I'm going to create my own stuff. I'm going to create how I see that. Um, and yeah, I have felt over the last, you know, I'd say probably three, four, five, six months, this whole year, 2018, I'm recording this right now on June 15, 2018. It's coming out about a week later for you. And, uh, it's been a challenging year. There's been a lot of things that have come up, a lot of things that I've shared here in the podcast. And so I find myself wanting to move towards spirit. And it's something that I've always believed that there is a, you know, there's something that's really regulating the world universe, right? I would, I would refer to it as that. I would call it the universe. I would maybe call it even spirit for sure the universe. But the challenge I've always had 
with a lot of these things is a lot of these things that I've had with um, faith and religion and, and the way that some people see spirituality in God or wherever that you choose to call your God, Buddha, Allah, you know, whatever. Um, this is all the same thing. It's just we just put different labels and titles onto it, right? Um, is that there seemed to me to always be this lack of responsibility. In other words, it's like, well, uh, God will show me the way. Or if it's God's will, it'll happen. Almost kind of this like, hey, man, my, like, my hands are just off the steering wheel of life. And God's directing all of it. Or the universe is. Or spirit is. And like, pfft. Pretty much the plan's already laid out for me. So, you know, I'm just going to like, just like throw my hands up and just, you know, surrender to it all and just let things unfold as they need to unfold. Right. And the piece of that, that I always have had just like a, like it triggers me is this feeling now again, my thoughts about it, about this lack of responsibility. In other words, you know, it's, oh, it's God's will for something. It's, you know, this is just the way that things are supposed to happen. I can't control it. Um, like this, this, this not taking action to create things in your life. And I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that our lives are created for us to co-create them, for us to really remember who we are, not figure out, remember who we are, to live our life in accordance with that and, and to really create what we want. And I think with remembering who you are, will help in that creation. And that's going to also mean you try a heck of a lot of things along the way. And you're going to find things that work and things that don't work for you. And, and it's all part of it. But the whole notion of like, well, God will just let me know. Or I've had other friends of mine that say that, you know, people are like, they're waiting for their purpose to be shown. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for God to show me the way. And it's like, well, why don't you decide what it is? Why don't you try taking action? Because I believe that's what our life is really about. And I really do feel and what I'm... You know, I'm reading lots of stuff right now. So I, I reread. I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever read the book Conversations with God. W- when it came out, but that's by uh, um, a gentleman's name is Neil Donald Walsh. Um, it was very controversial because he he has said that he's had had these conversations with God in his writing. And there's like there was three books initially, and there's been a whole bunch of books that have come after that too. Um, that it was the conversations he had with God, and that he's basically just like taking notes, right? Like dictating what God is telling him, the questions he's asking. And whether or not you believe it, I mean, I was really moved when I read those books for the first time. That was literally almost 20 years ago um, that I, when I read them. But now reading them at where I am in my life, it's a totally different flavor. So I reread book one. I've actually ordered an Amazon book two and book three. I'm rereading a book by Rob Bell, who's a pastor. I was first heard him I first hear him I just think I kept being drawn to the book and it is called now I can't remember it's a red cover I think it's called how something about how to be here now or something um I was just really I remember I read that book picked it up at an airport traveling home on a flight and I you know it's not a big book shorter chapters and I read the whole thing in like I don't know an hour and a half like I just consumed it I was just so just felt like I was like, like in a meditative state or trance when I read that book. It's just, I just soaked it all in. So I'm rereading that right now. Um, I'm going to, uh, read next a book called Return to Love by Marianne Williamson. You've probably heard of her who hasn't, She talks about A Course in Miracles. And so, yeah, I just feel myself really drawn to this. So why does this matter? And why am I sharing this with you right now? Well, I think sister that I've been feeling this, like pull this calling to it for like a long time. Probably when I first, from my first read Conversations with God. Probably even prior to that, when I first read the, the book for me, which I read at the age of, let me think, probably 25, a book called The Celestine Prophecy by James Redfield. When that book came out. That was like huge, huge, huge. Um, it was my first kind of understanding of like, oh, okay. So like stuff's just not random in the universe. There's like an order and purpose to things and reasons for things and just completely blew my mind like wide open but yet I ignored that calling for a really long period of time because it wasn't logical because you know I thought well uh religion like whatever um I didn't think that I I lived a lifestyle (laughs) partying and stuff at some points in my life and drinking lots and where it was like I don't really fit the whole religious thing 
I don't want to be told, you know, like, oh, you can't have premarital sex. I'm like, well, that's, that's out the, that's out the window now. I was living with my then boyfriend, now husband. I was like, well, living in sin, can't, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in an an unlawfully, how does that go? Unlawfully wed, unwed, out of wedlock. I don't know. Living in sin, living with a man who's not my husband. And, um, and I think there was also a piece of me too, that was a little afraid of it. There was a bigness feeling to it that I wasn't really quite sure how that fit. And so, you know, I just judged it all and said, yeah, that's for people that feel that they can't direct their lives and they just want to place everything in the hands of the universe or God and just like not have responsibility. And so like, screw that. But I'm telling you right now, there's something for you, sister, whether it's a pull towards spirituality, whether it's a pull towards a person, a relationship, whether it's a pull towards career, a purpose, a calling that you think that you have, that you're ignoring right now. And the thing is, is I know there's lots of stories you have in your head, right? Of how you think that you're not ready and you're not enough and... Is this really God speaking or the universe or, or the voice inside of me? Like, is this really all this? And you question it and you stop and then you don't take any action. You just sit on it and sit on it and sit on it. And then time passes and then, you know, you squash it some more. And then you're like me, 49-year-old woman saying like, maybe I should start studying some of this stuff again. Maybe I should really be open to different possibility because I really feel that. It's interesting, you know, like my seven and a half year old has asked about God for probably the last year. And, you know, probably things that he's heard his friends say or something, and maybe something at school, I'm not really quite sure. But, um, and so I've answered him the best of, you know, what I believed at the time. I was like, well, some people believe in a God and some people believe this. And, you know, the thing is we get to figure that out for ourselves. And, but there's this sense of peace and calm that I'm experiencing for myself that's very new. It's very new. I don't even know if I had this kind of sense of peace and calm when I was a child, to be honest. I found myself always kind of thinking about like what's coming up next or what's happened in the past. And like, I literally remember summer holidays. So summer holidays, hit, it's like, yeah. And then like counting down the days of when I had to go back to school. And I didn't even hate school, but it was this thing of like, well, things end. So how many days left until that thing ends? And I have to move on to the next thing. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I was. I'm sure I was. I know I was. At times present in my life as a child and a, and a young adult and a teenager. But not like I feel now. <laughs> not like I feel now. And I feel like, and you know, perhaps part of this too has been just turned 49 and gone through a lot of stuff this year. And I'm just like, man, you know what? Life is really precious. Life is meant to be fully lived. I have at least another 49 years left in my life because I'm going to live way past 100. And uh, what do I really want from here? You know, like asking a lot of the bigger questions, a lot of things that I talk about here in the podcast, like, what do you want? And like, who are you? Why do things matter in your life? What do you need to do to create the life that you truly want? And I believe that having a trust that as difficult things will be, and yes, you still have to take action, is to know that even in times where it's like shit is crashing down on you, of like, you know what? It sucks. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna denounce the fact that it's not painful right now or difficult or challenging or I feel hurt or I feel betrayed or I feel like what the hell? I feel like I'm in the pit. That it's really gonna be okay. That those words, trust and surrender, it's so interesting. I feel myself just pulled to those worlds, right? Those words, trust and surrender. Have it on one of the t-shirts of the woman wanting to more store. The same thing with remember who you are. Those are both a lot of things that are talked about in religion. The questions that will create much more of, again, been my experience, sister, of And people that I know that are really connected to faith and God and universe of just like, just trusting, you know, it doesn't mean again, that you don't feel the things you feel or see things are happening in the world and maybe want to do something because of it or to provide support or to be the one to inspire or to lead or to, to help in some way, but to kind of know like, that's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I trust and I know that there is something in this experience 
for me to experience. And that's why I'm having this experience. It's a piece that I don't, again, I don't think I've ever felt before. And I just, I would like you to have that same opportunity, sister. So here's your more tip for today. Like, this is just a question. You can journal about it. Just think about this. Is Where do you need to tap more into, to, into source? It doesn't matter what you label it. Universe, God, you know, whatever your religion, whatever your flavor is, the voice, like whatever, like, where do you need to tap more into that? And maybe a better question is this is, what do you need to do to tap more into that? Do you need to read? Do you need to spend more time in nature? Do you need to create more space? Do you need to meditate? Do you need to journal? Have conversations with friends? Like my good friend Jill, because I was telling her about, about, uh, I still listen to Oprah's Super Soul Sunday podcast. I'm like, I know a lot of you, by the way, have told me this podcast. I'm like, why didn't you tell me, Karen, listen to the podcast, like the most incredible guests. And, you know, it's Oprah, right? So the conversations they have, they always go back to spirituality. Always, always, always. And uh, so we're going to read Return for Return, uh, Return to Love, the Marianne Williamson book, together, which is kind of cool. And have conversations about it. So what do you need to do? What is an action step that you can take that will help you connect more to source? Which will create some calm in your life, which we can all use more of, sister. Don't you agree? So finishing up today, number one, make sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. Go to iTunes, do that. Leave a five-star review so you can help me connect with more women that need to hear this message. Number two, if this podcast episode today spoke to you, resonated with you, connected in some way, I want you to share this up. Post it up on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, wherever you like to hang on social media, Twitter. Share this episode so another woman can hear this message. Also, make sure to subscribe to the One Want Two More newsletter so you can be part of the tribe. I'm going to send you some really amazing gifts. Number one is two amazing trainings, which really help you remember who you are, how to drop your stories and create new ones, and also how to start your, start your day in power with the More Four, which is a PDF action guide and a video training. So I'm going to give you all that when you sign up for the newsletter. So head over to drkarenosram.com slash action guide, and I will get you hooked up on that today. So I will talk to you in the next episode, sister. A life of more is just one step away from you doing the fucking work every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosburn.com slash newsletter.